Greetings, everyone. This is Terry Naturally with another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. We're here every Saturday and Sunday morning from 8 o'clock until 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. And we are here for you. We are here to help you understand that your health, my health, is only under the control of you and I. We are responsible for our well-being. We can prevent disease. We can reverse disease. And most of the diseases that we have today, 98% of those diseases, so-called diseases, as I like to call them disorders, because our body is out of order. They are not diseases. They are metabolic malfunctions. And we can prevent that by changing our lifestyle. The choices we make daily, over time, not in a day or two, a month or a year, but decades, we can influence our health by the choices we make every day. If you're going to walk a thousand miles, every step puts you on the track to complete that journey. Our life is a journey. It can be healthy or unhealthy by the choices we make. We are responsible for our health, not the drug companies. In fact, they are against us because drugs cause serious side effects that may require more drugs to inhibit the side effects of the previous drugs. Doctors know nothing about nutrition. And that's not slamming doctors. Doctors are good people who want to help. But their education is not supporting health and nutrition. They are chasing diseases with drugs and writing out prescriptions, which in the long term causes more side effects. Make your choices, healthy choices. And we try to present, prevent, excuse me, present ideas that you can use daily to influence your health. And I believe in a matter of three to six months, you can see so much change in your health and your life well-being. Some people just don't want to change, and that's okay. That's your choice. <laughs> life is all choices. So if you want to change, if you're tired of being sick and unhealthy, tired of being unhealthy, you can be healthy, healthier. Doesn't make any difference how old you are or the conditions that you are trying to correct. Food is our medicine. And if we are sick, it's because we are not choosing the right lifestyle choices. And we want you to learn more about those choices so that's why we have the show on Saturday and Sunday. I wish we could do it every day. I would like to have more time to give you ideas and offer you more scientific-based evidence that food is your medicine. It's not all the sugar and carbohydrates. It's not all the junk food, the fast food, the processed and ultra-processed foods that shorten your life that create all the diseases and leave you in a terrible condition. So today we're going to talk about some topics that I think will be wonderful for you to learn more about. We're going to talk about why you have a low thyroid. An underactive thyroid. It affects about 70% of all women. 
in about 50% of all men. Underactive thyroid, hypothyroidism. And then we'll talk about a multivitamin that may prevent dementia, Alzheimer's disease. And really, is melatonin safe? Some people claim it is not safe. Let's look at some facts. And common habits that will damage your liver, that people do every day. Every day we damage our liver. And how to exercise in a way that will increase your longevity a way to a longer life. And we have three reasons that I want to share with you to get your blood pressure down. It's a silent killer. Your blood pressure is a very dangerous and often overlooked condition that we should not let go unattended. And what's coming up next? Flu season. It's here. So how to boost your immune system with a couple of very powerful foods. Naturally, alternatives that can boost your immune system. Because a flu or cold is caused by a virus. How can we control that virus that it does not enter the cellular level of our body and cause the symptoms and side effects of viral infection? And we have a lot more on the agenda, but we have only an hour. And I don't want to waste any more time to get right down into the facts and talk about how to improve your thyroid function. And so many people are on drugs for thyroid, for thyroid support, and these drugs are synthetic, and they are not the right type of drug to help your thyroid. So we want to make some big changes. So let's think about how we can improve our thyroid un- from an underactive thyroid to a normally functional thyroid, which with peak optimal levels of your thyroid. Now, there are three signs, many signs, I should say, but three that stick out more than others. That your thyroid needs support. Number one, skin problems. Your thyroid gland helps control how fast your skin cells are shed. And in cases of underactive thyroid, called hypothyroidism, the skin is dry, very dry, scaly, rough, thick, and coarse. And the hair falls out. Many women complain about losing their hair. They see more hair hair on the pillow after a good night's sleep or in the sink, in the shower. They have brittle nails. They break off easily. Thinning out of the outer third of the eyebrows. This is a classic symptom and sign of an underactive thyroid. Look in the mirror. Don't go now. (laughs) Listen to the program first, then go look in the mirror. And if you look in the mirror, the outer third, away from the brow, away from the center of the nose, the outer third of the eyebrows, so your eyebrows are smaller. And number two, tired and chilled. The thyroid gland is like the gas pedal of a car. 
You push the pedal and you get more speed. You propel forward faster. So the thyroid gland is like a gas pedal of the body. And when it isn't working well, you might feel cold, tired, muscle cramping, and sluggish. And also, number three, you just have a very poor digestive system. Low thyroid function leads to underactive digestive processes like slow motility, constipation, weight gain, bloating, and reduced acid production. Yes, acid production. We need acid in our stomach. There are good acids and bad acids. The good acid is called hydrochloric acid, betaine hydrochloric acid. That is our digestive juices that digest protein in our stomach. We don't digest carbohydrates or sugar in our stomach. We digest protein in our stomach. And we need plenty of acids to break down the protein. But when we have a low thyroid function, we also have a reduced production of the hydrochloric acid. And then there are other signs of an underactive thyroid. Depression. Arthritis. Painful joints. Puffy face. Getting up in the morning, you look in the mirror and you have a puffy face. Puffy ankles and a very slow heart rate. Because as you speed up the body, because the thyroid controls the rate of metabolism of the body, and when it is low or slow, everything slows down. Your digestive system slows down. You are just tired and exhausted. You have no get up and go. It has already went not there anymore. Symptoms of a low thyroid function may come back, but slowly over the course of years. So you don't even know it's because it's not a killer. You're not going to die. You might feel that you might feel that way because you feel so exhausted, so tired. Nothing is right. You might not even notice you have a low thyroid. And you may just think, oh, I'm just getting older. Friends, you can be in tip-top shape in your 70s, 80s, and 90s. This is why we need to consider the symptoms and the signs because unless you have a thyroid panel test to determine what the thyroid is doing, you just think you're getting old. I'm getting tired. I'm getting exhausted. No, I'm depressed. I have painful joints. If you describe those symptoms to a doctor, they're just saying, well, you're getting older. But they never stop to think about doing a test for thyroid function. And that would be ideal. So what does your thyroid need as a critical nutrient to improve the function of the thyroid? Well, the answer to that is iodine. Our thyroid requires iodine. If there is a severe deficiency of iodine, we can then have a goiter. In fact, back in the 1940s, 60% of all grade school kids had a thyroid goiter. 
And that's when they came out with thyroid pills that were dispensed in school. They were chocolate-flavored iodine tablets. And I remember back when I was in grade school, whoever did a special test or did something out of the ordinary was selected by one of the sisters. I went to Catholic school. Uh, the sisters would pick out a child in the room to pass out the iodine pills on Friday. Every Friday, we got a tablet of iodine, about 150 micrograms in that chocolate-flavored thyroid pill. Well, we did not know or understand that these were iodine tablets that were for our thyroid. They were just good-flavored chocolate pills. At least that's what we thought at the time. So after passing out one to each child in the room, whoever was selected by one of the sisters, we'd go back in the cloakroom and we would eat a handful of these chocolate tablets. We thought they were great. Well, they were iodine pills. And the RDA for iodine is 150 micrograms daily. Now that's enough to prevent goiter, but not sufficient enough to improve all of the signs and symptoms and improving the health overall of the thyroid. Iodine experts recommend anywhere from 12.5 milligrams of iodine daily to as much as 30 milligrams of iodine daily. Now that seems like a very high dosage. But all the vitamins and minerals that were selected as critical for our health and the dosage thereof were only enough to maintain a reasonable good health, but not enough to really make a difference in our health. Now, the FDA, give you an example, the FDA requires and suggest that we get in 400 IUs of vitamin D, D like in dog. But now many, many people, and I know many of you listening, listening to me today, are taking 5,000 to 10,000 units of vitamin D3. Not 400, but 10,000. I have my vitamin D test done periodically, and I have found over the time that the only way that I can keep it in a normal range is when I take 10,000 and 20,000 units of vitamin D daily. It has to be at a very high range. And if I do not stay consistently with 20,000 and sometimes only 10, I fall out of the normal range, the healthy range, for vitamin D3 levels. But now, in iodine, we know that only 150 micrograms will prevent goiter, but not improve thyroid function. So the dosage can range anywhere from 3 milligrams to as much as 25 or even 50 milligrams daily. Many of the alternative physicians who focus more on natural alternatives, recommend highly 50 milligrams daily of iodine for three months to really saturate the cellular level and the thyroid with iodine. And then they will drop it back down to maybe 12 to 25 milligrams daily. Now for Improving the thyroid function and thyroid conditions. The experts believe 15 to 30 milligrams of iodine associated with 200 to 400 milligrams of L-tyrosine and 150 to 300 micrograms of selenium. Now, people that are taking Synthroid, that is a synthetic hormone, 
There are two fractions that maintain the health of the thyroid, T4 and T3. T3 is the active component of the thyroid. Synthroid is T4. It is hypothesized that when we take enough T4, it'll convert to T3. Not going to happen in a lot of people. There are many, many people that can't convert the T4, the inactive form, to the active form, T3. But now a combination of iodine and L-tyrosine, L-tyrosine is an amino acid, and selenium, which actually synergistically works with these components to make it more effective, is a combination of T4 and T3. So what you want to look for to improve your thyroid function is a combination of iodine, three forms of iodine, potassium iodide, sodium iodide, and molecular iodine. And why are there three iodines that are so particularly important, so particularly important for your thyroid? Well, iodine is extremely important to the health of the breast tissue. Breast tissue prefers the molecular form of iodine. Thyroid functions better and prefers potassium iodide. And sodium iodide, the third form of iodine, enhances iodine absorption. So when you're looking for a supplement, to nutritionally support the optimal level of your thyroid. And believe me, I know people that have been on Synthroid for years. It has done nothing for them. Nothing changed. Because you can't convert the T4 to the active form T3. So you really want to improve your thyroid function with iodine, L-tyrosine, and selenium. These are critically important for the health of the thyroid. And also, those who are struggling to gain a normal thyroid function, avoid gluten and avoid Tap water that contains sodium fluoride and any kind of bromide. There is bromine in soft drinks, brominated flour. These are all different forms of the molecules that affect iodine. Iodine falls in the same category as the bromides. So if you have too many bromides, iodine cannot be absorbed easily. So avoid gluten, sodium fluoride, and you'll have a better chance of performing a better functioning thyroid. Now what we all want to live all of our lives with our brain function our mental function, how sad it is that we would live maybe 60, 70 years and then not even know who we are or anyone around us. And we lose our memory. We lose our learning skills. We we do not make good choices. Well, there are multivitamins that can prevent dementia and Alzheimer's disease. A daily multivitamin during clinical studies and scientific research shows improved brain function by adding a daily multivitamin to our vitamin regimen. Researchers enrolled over 2,000 people over the age of 65 and divided them into three groups. One group took a 
cocoa supplement with flavonoids. Group 2 took a multivitamin supplement every day. And Group 3 took a placebo, a fake pill. All participants were followed for three years and their mental function was assessed with memory recall, verbal fluency, as well as other tests of mental ability. The cocoa extract and placebo had no effects. The group taking a daily multivitamin had a 60% slowing in cognitive aging, meaning keeping your brain function, mental function, mental capacity, ability to learn, equivalent to almost two years or better, longer, for a better mental function than did cocoa extract or placebo. Multivitamin, adding vitamins to your diet makes great sense. Now, a characteristic of a good daily multiple Now, what I like, I don't like a daily vitamin supplement because you just can't put enough into one little tiny tablet. Just by sheer volume, it's not possible. But I'll tell you more about that in just a moment. I've got to take a break here for some commercials. But when I come back, I'll tell you why a good multivitamin is a multi-multivitamin, meaning more than one tablet daily. More than one tablet daily. So I'll do that right here. I'm Terry Naturally, and you're listening to Terry Talks Nutrition. We'll come back right after these messages right here on the same station, and we'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned. Greetings, my friends. This is Terry Naturally with another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. We're at the bottom of the hour. We'll be working up until the top of the hour. So we have a lot more time left, about 27, 28 minutes left to share with you more options, more choices for better health. You can have better health. You are not... able to feel that, well, it's just unfortunate that I'm unhealthy. This is the way I came in, and this is, all, this is the way I'll be going out. All my parents are unhealthy, and so am I. They all have heart attacks, and I'm sure I will have to. The only thing that's hereditary is the diet, not the conditions. You can change by choice the conditions that you are challenged with or not challenged with. So learning to be healthy and and choosing better choices, no, health is a matter of choice. So you just choose well. Now in the characteristics of a good daily multiple, I don't believe you can do that with a one tablet daily. And I'll tell you why. Because if you took all the vitamins and minerals in the palm of your hand, it would be about the size of a golf ball. Now, if you have a one a day multivitamin and mineral that is the size of a golf ball, I will agree that a daily multiple will work. But the one I take And the one that I refer everyone to is a multi-multi, meaning two or three tablets daily of a vitamin and mineral supplement. Because in this way, you'll get more meaningful levels of vitamins and minerals that your body requires. I've seen products on the shelves of stores everywhere. And I know people want to take, Jay, I don't want to take two or three tablets a day. I just want to take one tablet daily. Well, you can, my friend, because that is a choice. And you're free to make the choices you choose. 
But just trust me that one tablet daily will not give you the meaningful levels of all the vitamins and minerals that your body requires. You can look at the label and you will see every vitamin and mineral known to man and woman and kids. (laughs) But they'll be there in such a low level that it's like spitting in the ocean, expecting something to happen. I have seen one product on the shelf in a health food store, a daily vitamin and mineral supplement. Now, we need about 1,000 milligrams of calcium. Remember that, 1,000 milligrams of calcium. We need about 300 milligrams for a woman and 400 milligrams for a man of magnesium. Now, this daily supplement that I picked off a health food store shelf had 25 milligrams of calcium. But because many consumers are unaware of how to read a label or know what they should be getting for vitamins and minerals, they just buy the one a day. But remember, I said 1,000 milligrams of calcium, and this product had 25 milligrams. And we need three or 400 milligrams of magnesium And in this daily, it had 10, 10 milligrams of magnesium. You want to do better than that, or don't buy the product. And these nutrients are for everyone. You don't need age or gender-specific formulas. We'll sit down at the table. In a family of four or five, we don't have individual dinners. All the vitamins and minerals we need are in the food we eat. And so a supplement does not have to be for a male or a female or a child. That is good marketing hype. Nutrients in their optimal forms for absorption and efficacy. They have to be the active forms of B vitamins and chelated minerals. So look for a natural formula free of toxic ingredients like BHT, artificial colors, artificial flavors, and always say no way to gummies. They frequently contain sugar, high fructose corn syrup, artificial colors, artificial flavors, and they are low on vitamins and really low on minerals, especially iron. So we ought to make sure you get the right multi. If a multi can have an effect on your health and your longevity and, and an ability to lower Alzheimer's disease, and dementia, then you should get a good one to do that. Don't take a chance. Now, there have been some questions about melatonin. Is it safe? Is melatonin safe? Well, earlier this year, many news outlets reported that melatonin was poisoning kids and that children had died from melatonin. This is so much garbage. This is so much baloney, horse hockey. However, the majority of the cases were kids who accidentally ate melatonin, mostly were in the form of gummies mistaken for candy, and they experienced no lasting harm. Now, two children were reported to have died. But they both had other underlying health issues, and it is deceptive to say that melatonin only was responsible for their deaths. The research by one of the top 
PhDs in the world on melatonin, Dr. Russell Richter at the University of Texas, San Antonio, has been researching for 40 years the benefits of melatonin. And there are no known side effects of melatonin. You can eat a pound of melatonin and it is non-toxic, will not kill you. And he is one of the highest respected researchers on melatonin. You can listen to his YouTube's lectures on melatonin. You can read his book on melatonin. I wrote a book on melatonin. You can go to my website, terrytalksnutrition.com, and you can buy my book on melatonin. And it is far more beneficial than just for sleep. There are 28,000 studies on melatonin. The most researched natural ingredient. And melatonin is not a hormone. It's a marvelous molecule. A hormone is excreted from a specific gland or organ and only from that gland. It is not found anywhere else. A hormone like DHEA is excreted from the adrenal glands, not found in food. But melatonin is found in every form of food and living substance or living or living human being or or goats or frogs or snakes. It's everywhere. You can find it in cherries, walnuts. It's everywhere. It does not behave as a hormone. It's a molecule that's found in everything. And it is a molecule that has the greatest effect on the metabolic function of the body. It is a powerful antioxidant. It's a powerful anti-inflammatory. It's powerful to boost, to boost the immune system. Yes, it does help to sleep because melatonin is naturally secreted at nighttime from the pineal gland in the brain. But it is not a hormone. And there are wonderful effects from it for all kinds of diseases and health conditions. A recent review of high dose, greater than 10 milligrams of melatonin, clinical research trials found it was extremely safe with no significant adverse effects. Doctors today are treating women with breast cancer up to 100 milligrams a day. And you don't have to take it at nighttime. If you're going to take it for a condition such as boosting the immune system, breast cancer, prostate cancer, as an anti-inflammatory, you take it during the day. My regimen includes 20 milligrams of melatonin nightly. I take 10 milligrams a fast-release melatonin, chewable tablets, and 10 milligrams of a sustained-release form of melatonin. Melatonin has a half-life of 35 to 45 minutes. Now, like St. John's wort, has a half-life of 24 hours. So what do I mean when I say half-life? Well, 50% of the substance you're taking is excreted in a certain period of time. So 50% of the melatonin is excreted within 35 to 45 minutes. So it does not have a very pronounced effect. And so I also take a 10 milligram. Now, Now I have a combination of 20 milligrams. 10 milligrams fast release, 
10 milligram sustained release because the sustaining release of the melatonin is over a period of five to seven hours. So this is a way to take melatonin and everybody, according to the research from Dr. Russell Richter, everybody should be taking melatonin every day. Now, if you want to take it for your health, take it in the morning or at noon. It's not going to put you to sleep. It will not make you drowsy. And if you want to take it to improve the sleep cycle, then take it at nighttime. And usually, as soon as we see nighttime, then we need to take melatonin. It's not an hour or two before bedtime. Some people go to bed at 8 o'clock. Some people go to bed at noon, excuse me, at midnight. And they take it an hour before midnight. We need to take it at dark. As soon as it becomes dark, melatonin is excreted from the pineal gland. So we need to take it on a timely basis, not an hour or two before bedtime, but at dark. At sunset is the best time to take melatonin for sleep. But for health, take it in the morning or any time during the day. All the research on breast cancer, prostate cancer, the researchers and the doctors are going up to 100 milligrams daily. And it's during the day. But like any safety of any product, parents should keep melatonin and any other supplements or minerals out of the reach of children. And even all medicine and supplements out of the reach of children. Now, if you want to read more about my book, it's called Wake Up. Melatonin is for more than just sleep. You can get it on my website. You can get it at Amazon. It's the second best-selling book on Amazon, on the self-published books. No, I'm with you an hour. I'll be with you an hour tomorrow. But reading a book, you gain so much more information, and you can refer back to it all the time. I read a book I highlight it. I never read on my computer. If I find a very interesting scientific study, a very interesting article that I want to read, I don't read it on my computer. I print it out. And then I can read it anytime I want. I can mark it up. I can write notes in it. I highlight it. And then I can read it over and over and over again. And I can do that anywhere. I don't need to have my computer with me or my, my iPad. Get my book. Melatonin will change your life. It's called Wake Up. Melatonin is for more than just sleep. On my website or at Amazon. Now, you have a liver. And that liver works hard. It has over 300 pathways that it works on. 300 conditions that it works on. So it works very, very hard. It detoxifies your body. It breaks down all the chemicals in your body, all the hormones in your body that are then spent. They have to be excreted. So we need our liver desperately to have a good health. But there are some common habits that destroy or at least hurt our liver. And there are three habits that will damage your liver. Number one, not enough sleep. Sleep really is a real health promoter. Most people try to get by on less, five or six hours a night. I try to get eight to nine hours 
every night. So sleep is really critical for good health. You know, when your battery is running low on your phone, you have to charge it, right? And it takes time to charge it because now you have more power. You have more battery life. And if we want more battery life to our bodies, to our health, we need to charge it. We need to charge our body. And the charging takes place during sleep. Actually, sleep problems increase the risk of all types of disease. All types. Diabetes. Heart disease. Obesity. All affects the liver. And today, we have an epidemic of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, including children. 18% of children, 18% of children have a fatty liver disease. And it's not diagnosed until sometimes it's too late because you have no effect. You don't feel it. So we need more sleep. Researchers in Taiwan found that people with a sleep disorder, insomnia, restless legs, increased the risk of liver cancer by 18% versus people with no problems with sleep. So the risk of liver cancer was 18% higher when they experienced a sleep disorder or not enough sleep. And what about too much sugar? Well, many years ago, decades ago, alcoholics were the only ones that were diagnosed with fatty liver disease. The alcohol caused fatty liver disease. But today, we have what is called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So what's causing liver disease today, and even in children? Well, even for otherwise healthy adults and children, the high intake of sugar is associated with an almost 50% increased risk of liver damage. Too much sugar. is killing and damaging our liver. For every 1% increase in A1C levels, 1%, just 1% increase, the risk of liver scarring increases by 15%. And, of course, medication damages our liver. Alcohol damages our liver. Acetaminophen, otherwise known as Tylenol, is extremely toxic and the number one cause of acute liver failure. And people pop Tylenol like popcorn. And now they have kids Tylenol. They have liquid Tylenol. It is the number one cause, not drugs, not street drugs, Tylenol is the number one cause of acute liver failure. But there is help. First of all, stop the sugar. Reduce the intake of alcohol to a healthy level. There's nothing wrong with a drink. It's nice that a glass of wine, two glasses of wine a day is health promoting. The hard, the hard alcohol is not so health promoting, but a drink a day is not going to hurt either. But it has to be minimal, minimized. Reduce the amount of alcohol. One or two glasses a day of wine, very nice. 
It's considered a good food. It has a lot of health-promoting benefits. But not when you skip five days of drinking wine and you drink your 10 glasses of wine on the weekend. doesn't work that way. And there are some nutrients. Stop the sugar, of course. Stop the alcohol, or at least reduce it and minimize it. And use it in a range of where it's health-promoting, not health-damaging. And there are some nutrients that can be quite helpful to improve liver function. Andographis, an herb that is found in the Himalayas and produced and extracted in manufacturing facilities in India. Andographis, A-N-D-R-O-G-R-A-P-H-I-S. It is one of the best herbs for promoting good health. Reduces fat deposits in the liver by 33%. Increases protective antioxidant levels in the liver. And reduces insulin levels by 42%. And grapeseed extract. The French grapeseed extract, OPCs, in patients with fatty liver disease, grapeseed extract reduced liver enzyme levels by 46%. And reducing the size of the liver by about 10%. When I say it reduces the size of the liver by 10%, that doesn't sound very healthy. But people that have an unhealthy liver have a very large liver. A normal liver would weigh about four to five pounds. But people that have obesity, their liver could weigh as much as 20 pounds. That's all fat. And now the normal cells healthy cells of the liver are replaced by fat and reduces the function of the liver. And milk thistle, one of the best known botanicals for the liver. In human clinical trials of patients with liver disease, treatment with milk thistle reduced elevated liver enzymes by up to 20 to 30%. In some cases, actually returning liver enzymes to normal values and normal levels. So what I recommend for a good liver supplement to maintain a healthy liver, take about 200 milligrams of vandagraphis, 100 milligrams of OPCs from French grapeseed extract and 100 milligrams of milk thistle. Now this is a great combination of botanical extracts that improve liver function. Now you can take this two or three times daily. I take mine two or three times daily. It's a great combination to improve liver function. That's all we are doing is making choices to be healthier. It's your health. And it's our responsibility and our obligation to maintain a healthy function in our body. You can't leave it up to the doctor or anybody else. They can be there to help and provide assistance, but it's us, you and I, that have to maintain a good lifestyle and choose them and make the right choices to do that. And with that, my friends, I'm all out of time. But remember, health is your responsibility. You are the only ones that can improve your health or allow your, your health to deteriorate. So say a prayer for this crazy, crazy world. And God bless you, my friends. And God bless this great country that we come back to the country that we loved before. 
Thank you for listening to Terry Talks Nutrition Weekly Show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform, including Apple, Google, and iHeartRadio.